And Rosa tells me the priests used a unique method to help maintain their dominance. You have a priest representation here. You can see the head dress with the snake designs. Look at the mouth with the fangs and the hands with the clothes. And we observe that he's holding a San Pedro cactus. Rosa explains that when correctly prepared, San Pedro cactus is a potent hallucinogen. Clutched in the priest's hand, it's a symbol of tremendous importance to his religion. It's the key to his power and his control of thousands of devoted pilgrims. Up next, I investigate how the San Pedro cactus and other psychoactive drugs were used to control the people of Chavin. And I explore the dark heart of its temple of doom. I've been exploring Peru, trying to unlock the secrets of the mysterious civilization of Chavin. Manipulating powerful symbols from the jungle, priests controlled a religious state based on elaborate rituals involving music, dance, and psychoactive plants. Christian, what's your specialty? Christian Messia, co-director of the Stanford Project at Chavin, tells me more about the priests' use of hallucinogenic drugs 2,500 years ago. And the archaeological evidence is startling. Uh, oh my God, look at all this stuff. Sitting in a shed, protected from the weather, are many of the stone heads which once lined the temple complex. Yeah, there's one in particular I wanted to show you. Yeah? Yeah, which is this one. Oh, this one here, huh? Exactly. So what's so special about this one? Can you see that? Oh, yeah, this. Mm -hmm. That's mucus. Mucus? Exactly. Okay, wow. That's a bit weird. Why do they represent this person with mucus? Well, when you consume uh, psychoactive substances uh, through the nostrils, you get that like, mucus flowing. Ah. And they actually captured the mucus coming out of his nose mm -hmm. in stone. Exactly. So what role did these hallucinogens play in the society? Well, what, I, what we believe here in the project is that it was a very a really important part. It's so important that it was depicted on the facade of the main temple, at the most sacred place of Chavin de Wanta. I've never seen anything quite like this collection of stone heads. So was this I asked Christian to show me where they were 2,500 years ago. Which is the head. Is the only now, the head. only one is left in its original position. It was part of the whole wall. It was inserted in those holes that we see along the wall. And this, this tannin head, particular tannin head, is representing some form of transition between a human being and a jaguar. So this is, yeah, half feline. I can see it. It's got the teeth and mm -hmm. the mouth and the feline. Mm -hmm. But I guess the head, the eyes are human, yeah? Exactly. Okay, but what is it? Well, we assume that the divinity was living in another world. So in order to get to that world, you have to consume some sort of substances. They will lead you. They will put you in a state of mind. They will lead you to that world in order to enter to that world. Actually, this represents the transformation from human to feline. Exactly. There and that was go. done through taking a substance, some sort of mm -hmm. hallucinogen. Mm -hmm. so, wow. A society that surrounds its most holy center with sculptures of hallucinating jaguar people with mucus coming out of their noses is truly bizarre. That subject, and Christian has more to show me. We have found just like two days ago these snuff tubes. You have to be very careful, extra careful, they're very delicate. Okay. That we found in a canal. Snuff tube? Yeah. Wow. This is a bone, yeah? Probably so it's a bare bone. Dozens of these bone snuff tubes have been found in Chavin. Sometimes intricately carved, they were used to inhale powdered hallucinogens. Tiny mortars and pestles were used to grind up the psychoactive ingredients. Some were from the Amazon jungle, like the seeds of the yopo and the resin of the varola tree. What Rosa and Christian have shown me changes my perception of Chavin and its rituals completely and the story becomes stranger and stranger. This is the saga of a cult built around hallucinogenic plants, the cult of Chavin. The ceremonies on the outside were just the beginning. 
From the circular plaza, Rosa takes me up enormous steps which created the thundering noise of water flowing through canals. Up until 2,200 years ago, priests used the same stairway to lead a chosen few initiates into an actual temple of doom. And, of course, in every proper temple of doom, there has to be a terrifying idol hidden inside. Yes. The temple above ground is just an entranceway into this massive labyrinth. Huge stones were used to build over two miles of tunnels. Would there have been candles in this passageway? We don't have evidence of candles used at that time. Mm -hmm. There is no signs of the smoke on the walls. It's kind of eerie. I'm surprised by what Rosa just told me. I've been in tunnels like this in Mexico and in Egypt. But there was almost always evidence of the use of fire to light the way. How did they see where they were going without torches? They would have been in complete darkness. So is there any sense of what was going on in rooms like this or down here in the corridors? This may have been to uh, bring some of these initiated people and to break them down. So more of like the cult of Chavin. The initiates were down here in the darkness being reprogrammed by the priests? That's right. For Rosa, it's a classic psychological technique. Disorient people in order to brainwash them and to prepare them for what they were about to see. Oh, wow, and there it is. It is the supreme deity of Shavin, a god in stone, illuminated by a single beam of light from a tiny ventilation shaft. Archaeologists call it El Lanzon, the lance, because of its shape. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. An intricately carved, massive face with its lips curled in a perpetual snarl. These initiates would come down this dark port. They're in altered states of mind due to some drugs. And they come in here and they're standing face to face with this really psychotic looking god. And so this, this is just, this is a very powerful figure. What an experience, overwhelming. It must have been a psychedelic blur of fear and awe. In the dark, the sound of water rushing past through acoustic canals would have added an element of heart-pumping dread. This sort of stormy sound. On top of everything that they're going through, they're hearing this thundering noise in front of the sky. That is one other reason for them to be fearsome of this figure. The God is talking to them. I can only imagine what they must have been experiencing. It all seems so bizarre. Pervasive use of hallucinogens, ritual ceremonies in dark underground tunnels, brainwashing. How would such techniques enable Shavin to become a cultural empire? Rosa tells me I may be able to see that for myself, since some of the methods of the Shavin priests are still in use today on the Pacific coast. Coming up, an ancient...